to zing this. Nothing? Woo. Oh, okay. Guess we're going to get started with some current event stuff before we get to our main topic. Then we've got some announcements at the end of the show as well to talk to you guys about. So, kind of an exciting show here. Uh, Ellie, what do you got for for current event topics that you'd like to discuss? Well, I recently watched the... Uh, is it... Valerian? I was going to actually ask okay. you how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, the, the trailer that debuted. Yes, that I actually saw that prior to seeing Doctor Strange. I've mourned Doctor Strange in a little bit. <laughs> but yes, that was. it looked very, um, how do you say, very... It looked very visually astonishing. It looked like some movie that you you have to see in the theater because it's going to be very visually. Yeah, it was definitely had a, a nice artistic, very colorful. Mm-hmm. It, I, I thought it was really cool looking, and you definitely could tell who does it. And that is? Luc Besson. <laughs> who is from? Fifth Element. Okay, cool. Yes, cool. one of my favorite favorite movies back in the day he also did lucy as well yeah so like i said definitely a good pedigree of stuff that he's done and i i was very impressed with that currently working on getting the graphic novels that's something we could possibly discuss on a yeah definitely later episode of the podcast i'm gonna go with my thing yes i actually picked up titanfall 2 this week Uh has a campaign this time, doesn't it? Yes, which I've kind of messed with, but I've been too busy playing the <laughs> online. I actually really enjoyed the previous one. Somebody on one of the Facebook groups I'm a part of pointed out that Target was having a sale. Somebody else, actually it was Kelly, who's been on the podcast, pointed yeah. it out to me as well. So that was definitely really cool to have that pointed out. So I got it at a black early Black Friday deal. I, I kind of was excited um, that you got it too, because... I'm not a big online player, but I love the single player campaigns and games, and I was excited to see that they were going to have one this time. So for me, I I yeah. really enjoy the game so far. I mean, I haven't had it that long yet, but mm-hmm. it's it's definitely been fun to play. They did capitalize a lot on what the previous one did, so I really enjoy the fact that they did that, and it was very well done in my opinion to to sort of build on what they had in the previous one. There's certain features that have they taken out. Um, you can customize your Titan, but you can't customize the weapons they carry, per se. Okay. And I kind of miss that about the older one hmm. so far. But like I said, I haven't messed with it too much. Who knows? It might be something you unlock later. I Like I said, just, just starting out playing it. Very impressed with it. Definitely a good buy if you uh, play first-person shooters and like giant mechs or just giant robots running around the battlefield. Because it... Who doesn't? <laughs> that's that's what really got me into it when I played the previous one was having that moment where that Titan fell and you know landed and you got in it and started battling in it. That I was like, this is pretty cool. It's 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 just definitely kind of a gimmick that kind of only distracts you momentarily from the fact that you're just still playing a first person shooter. But it's a good one. Cool. Speaking of what you've been playing lately, guess what I've been playing? What have you been up to? Well, PlayStation Three. They're mm-hmm. one of their um, free games this month with PlayStation Plus. Yes, with PlayStation Plus is Costume Quest Two. Oh. Yes, it's actually really really fun if you're just looking for just a cute, you know, not really have to put too much thought into it, going around collecting costumes and battling people. So it's been pretty cool. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, another trailer just released earlier, actually, was Ghost in the Shell, the live-action trailer with yes. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Ooh. So, I I watched the TV series, the standalone complex mm-hmm. of good anime, but this is based more on the movie, which, yes. as sad as this is, I haven't seen yet, so I definitely need to work on getting around to watching that. Yeah, it does look really cool. I thought that was another... Watching the trailer, um, kind of, it was another one that was very artsy-fartsy looking. Yes, it it definitely looked um, like a very, like, definitely go see it in theaters. Definitely something that's going to have a lot of vibrant colors, a lot of of stuff going on. Yeah, when it comes out on Blu-ray, 
watch it on your 4K television. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because everybody has those. <laughs> well, by the time it comes out, everyone right. will. Sure, why not? I have another announcement. Oh. Yes. So, Funko announced. Okay. The Witcher pop figures. Yes, we actually oh my gosh. posted about that on our Twitter. So excited. And um, I want all of them. I, of course you do. <laughs> I was going to say, which one do you want? But I no, kind of figured it just, was going to be all of them. Yeah, just want them all. <laughs> so, that's definitely cool. And those are based more on the third game, correct? The Wild Hunt? Yes. Cool. Yes, definitely. Another thing in kind of comic news before we get to discussing... Our ma- get to the discussion of our main topic is rumors have been flying around that uh, Fox possibly rebooting the X Men T. I mean uh, X Men movie franchise. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself and it's handing okay. out what we're going to talk about when I said TV, but the <laughs> X Men movie franchise possibly getting re- rebooted hmm. after Logan, which I find kind of interesting because I mean those have been going on for a while now. Yeah. And I guess Marvel is not getting any closer to obtaining the rights or anything. Or maybe this is what's happening. Maybe there's been some deals going on behind the scenes that Marvel could be getting the rights for all we know. So, like I said, I don't know what to think of this. It's well, it's interesting if they're going to redo it because, I mean, they don't have Hugh Jackman anymore. So, I, I mean, they're going to need to cast a new Wolverine. I know this has been said by other people. But Tom Hardy would be somebody I'd like to see do it. I think oh. he would. I think he would bring a very interesting take on the character if right. if, if I had choose. But like I said, who knows what they're going to do with this? So it would be interesting to see. You know, are they really going to reboot it? Because well, I mean, you never know. Since Marvel is part of the Disney conglomerate, who knows what they have up their sleeve? Uh, yeah, I mean, but <laughs> sadly, Fox does still own the mutant rights to the. To the movie, so who knows what will happen with that. And switching over to DC, yes, I just have one more little bit I would like to talk about just real quick. Um, I, I, I'm kind of hinted it before in other episodes. I'm a big CW fan, huge, um, with with their shows like Flash and Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, yes. and then now they have Supergirl. Yes. Um, they are actually doing a mega crossover with all four. Really? Yes. Super, Interesting. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. Um, so looking forward to that one for all you CW fans out there. All right, so to lead into our main topic today, there was another announcement that the Young Justice... TV show was going to be getting a third season. Yes. That, that was announced. Super exciting. We're definitely excited about that. It's a series that we both have watched. I, I've really enjoyed it. I, I have my problems with it, but overall, it's definitely a really well done, definitely very drama driven uh, animated comic show. So, our topic today that we're going to be discussing, Rob will be joining us for it, is yes. our favorite comic book animated TV shows. And there's a, definitely a few in there that we do discuss. So uh, we're going to get to that topic right after this break. This is Zing This. Zing This. Hey guys, welcome back to Zing This. Today's discussion topic is comic book based animated series yeah so we've got myself of course zinger we got ellie and we got rob so we'll be starting this discussion today with um i guess the thing that brought this whole topic up young justice is officially getting a third season that is so awesome. It is. Um, I don't know if Rob. I don't think you've watched that I've one. I've never watched it. <laughs> it. It's it's a really good one. Love it's it. um, it's kind of Teen Titans meets Titans sort of. So it's got the younger DC heroes yeah. like like um, Kid Flash, Robin, Nightwing. It's got all of them in it. So it's really cool. It's it's. Pretty drama heavy, actually. I, it, I've, yeah, yeah, it definitely it, has its points. It, it's yeah. it's a lot more drama driven than I feel a lot of the other um, shows that we'll discuss. So that one we're definitely excited about getting a new season of it. They they did a very really good job at threading stories through the two seasons that they had, and they've 
kind of left some stuff hanging. Not going to tell you what it is because I'm assuming you guys who haven't seen it might want to go out and get caught up on it. Yeah, and the... Um yeah, so that's why the the third announce the third season was such a great announcement because we we're very excited for some continuation of that. Yes, um, so we're gonna move on, I guess, to another real. I mean, we're probably gonna touch on Young Justice again at some point, but we're gonna move on to another one that I feel deserves some credit because it was a big part of a lot of people's childhoods. And it is a big part of the DC animated universe, which was the Justice League series and Justice League Unlimited, which was started back in the Batman animated series, which a lot of us grew up watching. Yeah, Justice League was uh, really well done. I especially liked the uh, the Unlimited series. It brought they in had some good storylines. It brought in a lot more characters, which was very cool. And it, I mean, they always had, you know, little cameos in the other. They brought in a few no one cared, but they did get Booster Gold they finally. Did, <laughs> they did get Booster Gold. And if you want your show to succeed, you have uh. to have Booster Gold in it in a DC universe. <laughs> because Smallville had Booster Gold in it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So. I guess the ball's in your court, uh, CW. Where's Booster Gold? <laughs> CW. <laughs> nice. So that one was definitely a great one. Uh, that started, of course, with the Batman animated series that a lot of us watched. That kind of came about because of the um, Batman and Batman Returns movies. It came about because of that. Uh, it also introduced us to Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, that we're all used to hearing and loving. Yeah. Uh, they had some great storylines there. They had Mark Hamill as the Joker. They Aww. Let's not forget one of the biggest things is that actually introduced Harley Quinn. It did. That was that was the Mad Love was the episode, and that's the one that introduced Harley Harleen Quinzel, who would later become Harley Quinn. So that was that was a big addition from the in the reverse. It was taking from the comics, but this was giving something back to the comics, which was a really cool way to, you know, intertwine those. After that, of course, came the Adventures of Superman, which picked up and built on the universe because Superman crossed over with the Batman. Batman crossed over with Superman. There was Green Lantern. There was Flash. So then when they had the Justice League come together, it was it felt very natural, and it's a very distinct art style. All the guys were drawn looking like they're about the size of a refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... Batman's ears were kind of long, but... <laughs> yeah, his his cow ears were... I mean, they, they did a good job. They had Doomsday in there. They had a lot of really cool Lex stuff. Lex Luthor was a lot of fun on that show. Stuff from the comics, and I recommend watching the Justice League series, both the Justice League, League, League and the Justice League Unlimited, in anticipation of the Justice League movie, because... Dark side is a part of it, and I feel like that's the best way to get somebody. And introduced. I don't think they have cyborg in it. Hey, we'll we'll get we'll get to how to get caught up on cyborg in a minute. <laughs> Ellie is great, but they do have uh, Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter, the members of the Justice League that they should use for the movie. Just saying. Yeah. Um. So that's a great way if you're not familiar with dark side they did a great job adapting a lot of the comic stories over into the animated world so that's definitely one that if you're a comic fan haven't seen that yet definitely go out give it a watch if you're a fan and you've watched it watch it again it's it's fun i was watching some episodes the other day and was having fun reliving them yeah there's i was watching it the other day myself the episode where uh lex luther and brainiac were, were like melded together yeah, yeah and that uh was a great episode great fight at the end yeah um sticking with the dc universe i guess we can go to cyborg and where he oh. you might get some backstory on him from so i'm gonna just start by saying i could do a whole episode on the teen titans <laughs> would this be part of your anime corner or is that not no. Okay. No, I don't, I don't, well, I'm not going to get into that. That's a, hold up. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a discussion of what's considered anime and animation and all that stuff. But Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. 
Okay. I could watch those over and over and over again. What series do I like better? I was just about to ask you that, actually, so I guess you beat me to it. So, Teen Titans is going to be the more drama, sometimes a little bit darker, uh, more serious type, even though it does have comedy elements, of course. Um, Teen Titans Go is a little bit more light and airy. I, I kind of like both for their differences. In, so I, ugh, I don't know. That's a hard one for me. In my opinion, I've watched both. Yeah. I kind of like Go a little bit more, but I don't think you'd appreciate it the way you would if you hadn't seen the original. It kind of right, just yeah. takes everything from the original and I just makes agree. fun of it. I so think that's, you have to watch the original. It's kind yeah. of the, the um, TV show for fans of a TV show. Now... I have some favorite episodes, but like I said, I could literally do an entire yeah. <laughs> show on just Teen Titans. But I like, um, if anybody's ever seen the shows. Well, who are the members on the t- of, of this version of the Teen Titans? Oh, you have Robin. Okay. You have Cyborg. Okay. You have Beast Boy, which is super adorable. Uh, Raven. Starfire. Awesome. Yeah, those are the, the main ones. And at some point in the regular series, they had, which is confusing to me, they had Robin, but then Nightwing. Yes, there was a future jump yeah. where the Robin in the show became Nightwing. Right. I don't know if they, I think they established that it was Dick Grayson, but. I see, I can't remember. That's the thing. I don't know if they've they ever officially said, this is this version. And then in Go, there's the, where he calls upon right. all the other Robins. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. To assist him. So that was really, really cool. Because they had a lot, they had um, the classic Robin. Yes. They had, I believe it was the Tim Drake version of Robin because he was a little bit more moody. Mm-hmm. They had the Carrie Kelly version of him as well. And of course him. And then there was like a bird Robin that was yes. like the ultimate Robin. Yeah, I love. saved them. I love that. And I loved, um, remember one of the episodes where he had, he has like that mask on. They could have always brought in uh, Robin from uh, Dark Knight Rises. Um, you know, the, the guy named Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that was the Robin. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> but the one where he has the mask on, he takes it off, and there's another mask. Yeah, and then they finally, at the end of the episode, they reveal, and they're like, oh, like oh, his yeah. face, because they finally get to see his face under the mask. I love that. There's just so many great, I love the show, so I could go on and on. All right, as we're wrapping up, I guess the... Um, Titan section. The, the Titan section in the, <laughs> in the DC ones. Um, another thing that was part of that whole interwoven universe that Bruce Timm and all them created was Batman Beyond. I kind of liked it. I, I'm not a super fan of it, Rob. What about I you? like I liked it. I just, like, it didn't feel like Batman. It felt like more like a Spider-Man-like character and Batman's futuristic universe but i guess i don't know it's it was interesting like it it was definitely enough to keep me entertained just uh not something i hold as gold and yeah i mean it, yeah and i haven't really seen it i have a lot of the comic books but i, I haven't seen the show i watched a lot of it it was a cool kind of continuation to the future of the DC animated universe they created. Okay. My biggest problem is with his costume. I don't like that he had the mouth slit. Like mm. to where when he talked, you could actually see his mouth moving. I would have rather been like Spider-Man to where uh, it was just like a... Oh, cross his face. Yeah. Yeah, to where he didn't have... I mean, I know you need the mouth to emote, but I think it would have been more menacing for him to be sitting there and talking and you didn't see a mouth. Yeah. That's just I my guess, personal yeah. cr- critique of a, of a costume and everything, so... I guess we'll jump over to Marvel. Yes. Oh, and, uh, oh, oh. And I think we're going to start with probably the one a majority of people yeah. on here watch as kids. Pop out your member berries because... Uh, your member your berries. <laughs> of course, the, one of the biggest comic cartoons of all time was the X-Men animated series. That was one of my favorites as a kid. I remember that watching was, that. That was like gold, like... Uh, you'd come home from school and Fox would have like randomly X-Men on. followed with Power Rangers followed with something else. I think but, Batman was on there too for at least the Fox I watched had yeah. it on randomly. But yeah, I think. 
But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that series. They did a good job of once again, they taken very seriously. Like yeah, it was, they was had very, not very comical, but they just had the dark good. Phoenix saga. They had a lot of good Days story. Of future past. They had a lot of good storylines from the comics in there. And I will say this right now, hands down best version of rogue ever. Oh yeah. I mean, I know they were, they're adapting it from the comics, but due to the movies, I think rogue kind of got a bad rap. Yeah. In that, she was a person who legitimately like was just this strong, you know, fighter who like took gr- took guff from nobody and would just fight anybody and was just like Still, they, they did a uh, good job with her powers and I miss that a lot of series since then haven't really utilized her. Oh yeah. Or S- they don't have her be as powerful. Right. Still haven't really seen a great version of Gambit in a movie either. He. he Gambit was really good in there. I, I liked him. He um he had that nice thick Cajun accent. He had um there I remember there was one episode where he like grabbed gravel and used that and threw it at somebody. Energized that, so that was cool to see him. I mean, the show covered like every character. We saw Cable, we saw Bishop, we saw Nightcrawler, mm-hmm. like uh Magneto was really well done in it. Oh yeah. Um, Sabretooth and Wolverine had their whole fighting the entire time. Wolverine called everyone Bub. <laughs> he, he, it was like, I think it was, there was a contract where he had to say it at least five times per episode, but it, it was great. It was a great way to introduce people to this world and then get them to go out and buy the comics. Cause I know it was, it was my first introduction to X-Men. Yeah, mine too. Um, so that's definitely a good example there. And I have a, Question slash suggestion. Okay. Um, which one of the Spider-Man series was um, voiced by Neil Patrick Harris? Was the that the MTV one? CIA yes, that, MTV that was the one. That ran about I think six or ten episodes. Yeah, I know it, it wasn't was very long. Supposed to. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it was supposed to be a spiritual successor to one of the movies. Oh, really? Okay. I believe it was a spiritual successor to the first one before they did a second one. I think so. I think it was. And it was... <laughs> Anyone remember Reboot? Um. No one remembers Reboot on Cartoon Network, that terrible CG show, because this made that look like solid gold at times. <laughs> I, I remember I like know. I watched it once or twice just to like just out of curiosity. I, I was just saying that as like a reference for like that has bad anime, bad computer CG, and it, this had about and a little like, bit worse. I only brought it up because I was I love Neil Patrick Harris, and I was excited when I found out that he was going to be doing a voice for him. Yeah. So, so. I just thought it was. I thought it would be cool, but So let's yeah. move on to a better Spider-Man, <laughs> the one from the 90s. Uh, that one, people say it's iffy, but I think it it's, to I, some degree, it holds up. Like, it was weird, because sometimes, like, they had the crossover. have, like, weird CGI. Yeah, the, and the background And it'd be really and cartoony, and... I liked it because it once again the what what was up with the nineties doing Peter, a really good job. Peter of, Parker looked a little weird in that, but Or yeah. are you have you watched them recently? I, I need to go back and the so Spider Man. Are you one, are you like them more for nostalgia because you were a kid or have you actually tried to rewatch them now? I've watched the X Men ones over again. Okay. I have not tried to get a hold of the Spider Man ones and I've already specified the D C ones or stuff. Spider-Man's a little more struggling, I think, but... It um, had some good stuff in it. it had, I, I mean, it had the crossover with the X-Men, which was pretty good. It did have some... Cro- like It had Punisher. It had Daredevil. It, it did it, have a lot of... Uh, so that was definitely a good one. Once again, they followed a lot of stuff from the comics and everything. They had Venom in it. It had Blade in one episode. I thought it did. I almost <laughs> said I wanted to say Blade, but I'm like, I don't think it did. But then Mor- Morbius, he was there because of the vampire guy that Spider-Man has to fight. Going to a probably more recent one that a lot of people are used to, Ultimate Spider-Man, which is going to be, I think, is renewed up until January or is ending in January okay. of 2017. Okay. Never watched it. <laughs> I watched it. It's pretty good. It takes a lot of cues from the Ultimate Universe. Um, he also, if you're a big fan of Luke Cage and Power Fist, they're actually in it. He has like a... Spider-Man basically gets a team together 
of people to work for shield at some point in the series. And they're part of that team. Uh, they're also later on is like a spider verse storyline oh. too, where he goes to different universes and recruits different Spider-Man to help him. And on the team on earth, they also have, um, some Spider-Man to help him there. There's a crossover with the guardians of the galaxy. He becomes a member of the Avengers. So there's a lot of, intermixing there that goes on which is really cool and i think there's some crossover with that in the hulk agents of smash series as well so that those kind of cross over there well i have another one to mention too okay um unless you want to mention it i know you like this one a lot are you gonna mention the earth's mightiest heroes yes avengers earth mightiest heroes once again I i think there's a going theme here of if you like the comics they do a great job of adapting it. Um, yeah, I, I've watched. They they had your favorite character, of course. They had Carol Danvers as yes. Miss Marvel, and she wasn't. She's now Captain Marvel, but in the show she was Miss Marvel. So that one was definitely a good one. They did a ton of good stuff with Iron Man. They had the Purple Man in it. They yeah, had the um. Man. Yep. Oh my gosh, they had a lot of stuff. Loki's in there. The Enchantress. The like, they did a lot of stuff with Thor. They did a lot of stuff with Captain America. There was a lot of really good storylines and stuff in there that they had. They had Giant Man. They had the Wasp. They had the Hulk had a really good story. Hawkeye. Hawkeye was great in it. Because yeah. Hawkeye was, was like this, once again, making jokes, making quips. Because he's, once again, not the most powerful person on the team. But he's he's out there doing his best. And it... it, it it's a really great show. I'm just kind of sad that they cut it as short as they did. It was did. two seasons? Uh, or was it two third? or three. It was two or three, yeah. but they did an amazing job in that time. Sadly, I was trying to find it on Netflix earlier. I haven't checked anywhere else, but it is <gasps> not on oh, Netflix no. right now. Oh, going to have to go buy it. <laughs> it's definitely a great series, so it's one I would definitely recommend to people. So, Earth's Mightiest Heroes is definitely a, a great one. Um... I guess some honorable mentions real quick before we move away from Marvel. There is a currently running Guardians of the Galaxy mm. one. I haven't watched any of it yet, sadly. There also is a um, Avengers Assemble, which took the one. place of um, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of mad at that in the sense of it took the place of my favorite. You're like, I'm not going to give it a try. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've watched some of it. It's, okay. it's meh. It's just Earth's Mightiest Heroes did such a great job that I feel like replacing it with that just wasn't the right move. In my opinion, I know there. if you look it up, there's probably some legal reasoning or some legal jargon that was the reason behind it. So, Because it's just weird that they replaced a... Very popular... A popular Avengers show yeah. with a popular Avengers show. Yeah, right. That it just, make it sense. just. Why wouldn't they just continue the yeah. other show? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it had some storylines going and stuff, but they were all good. They, yeah. they did a great job. They had a ton of different characters that popped in and out. So, sorry, going back to talking about Earth's Mightiest Heroes again. I guess another honorable mention would be uh, Wolverine the X Men. Hmm. And oh, yeah. I'm gonna say it. I'm. I'm sure Rob's going to probably jump on this. X-Men Evolution. X-Men Evolution was fine. Just like when you, when you're familiar with the old X-Men cartoon and then you get and that then X-Men Evolution is the next thing you get. It's fair enough. <laughs> so I guess we're going to move on to non major comic titles like non DC and non Marvel ones and i guess we're gonna i i, I want to save the big one for last okay that probably everyone's gonna remember but the tick yay the tick was fun i remember seeing yeah. it on the weekends and everything so that one was definitely a fun one to watch and everything even though i think the live action one with patrick warburton was way funnier oh, just because he he did a better job i think of expressing we're not it. talking about movies tv show Thank you. TV show. But I, I, know, I know, I'm just saying that. Because trust me, if we're talking about movies, there's a lot of animated movies I would be diving into. <laughs> TV. Uh, oh, animated animated comic book yeah, movies. Yeah, I was saying. Topic if we were... 
for another day. <laughs> exactly. Topic for another day. But the but the Patrick Warburton one's live action. I think they did another one recently with the live action. Anyways, this isn't a live action discussion. Yeah. So I guess we'll move on to the final one. I'm, I'm going to mention one more. Spawn yeah. on HBO was one. I... I I've watched it. Was entertaining. It. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's there. I just no, no offense. I just don't think we have anything to really delve into on that one. For I used us. to have some of the the, the uh, Mick Farland figures. Ooh. <laughs> so I guess the final one, if you would. Okay. Our little fun-loving turtles who love pizza. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, you go ahead and sing. No, that. I'm I'm not. Oh, okay. For copyright reasons. It's karaoke hour. Uh, that's a good one to name off since uh, Out of the Shadows just came out on DVD. And, and Bebop Let's and be honest, none of us saw it in theaters, so the DVD release is... Uh, the only way we're going to see it. Yeah. Um, so it was, watches a, it was a, really a, a visionary piece of cinematic work. Um, they really brought the cartoon... <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> Well, wow. they had Bebop, Rocksteady, and 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 Kang, Crane, Crane, Crane. Sorry, uh, mispronunciation. I mean, they brought the cartoon to life. If literally, I did not know like real live acting human beings could be cartoon characters <laughs> until I saw Bebop and Rocksteady. And uh, oh my gosh! But this is if it sounds like I'm making fun of it. I'll 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 name the movie's real redeeming quality. Casey Jones. He was. He was badass in that movie. That era. Except he <laughs> wasn't. I I know I might get flack for this. I don't mind the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. I it's, think they're in, fun. In all as honesty, as long as you don't take them serious. I enjoyed the second one more than the first one. It's giant turtles. Yeah. I mean, again, it's the, only, the turtle rap. It's the only problem is we. Pop those member berries, and we remember that in 1990, <laughs> someone did the franchise justice, and then it hasn't been done since. But back to the cartoon. It, it was definitely a great cartoon. It, it yeah. introduced all of us to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I think. I, I know plenty of people that swear by that. I, sadly, have probably not seen it in over... I'd say probably close to 10, 15 years now. Yeah, I'd and, say about the same. And I, it's one of those, I kind of want to see it again, but I don't. Because as we were talking about earlier, do I have nostalgia goggles on thinking about it? I might, I don't know. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see it, but I'd like to keep that, you know, as this this nice little... Member? This nice little part of my childhood that's 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 there that I... I that I can go back to. Unlike the Transformers, which I will watch at the... Oh geez, yes. At the all the time you watch yes, it, <laughs> I love it. The the old school Transformers, love I it to death. I f I mean, it's not based on a comic. I feel like Sonic the Hedgehog should be on this list. Sonic has a comic, yeah, but, but it came out it, yeah, after. Yeah, it came this. out so after. It's, yeah. But that so the show wouldn't have been inspired by. All, the, all I'm yeah. gonna say is it does hold up. You, you I, think I the, have the whole comic, the Sonic. Uh, animated In series. series and it holds up yeah i enjoy it yeah. hmm. i'll have to go back and see about that one i guess we could also another topic for a different time uh stuff that from our from when we were younger that holds up today still and that we'd be able to watch without sitting there going oh my gosh i watched this as a kid mm. tailspin darkwing duck uh um the oh why am i not thinking of the other one the one with uh, Tailspin, uh, not Tailspin, Darkwing Duck. Um, DuckTales. There we go. I was about to say, who are you doing and in a movie? Pretty <laughs> much any cartoon that came on Nickelodeon in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Ren and Stimpy, we all somehow watched that as children. Even though we were all not supposed Masters to. Masters of the Universe. And Rocco's Modern <laughs> Life, that's... Uh, but anyway. Uh, we we're getting off the comic topic here. Um... With that being said, I'm sure there's some that we missed. Which ones do you guys like? Or are there ones that we mentioned that you guys are a big fans of? Let us know. We'll be back after this break. This is... Sing This. And you beat me to it again. Yes. I 
Welcome back. So, pretty fun discussion about, you know, comics that were made in TV shows. Uh, I'm sure that we could have probably had a few more in there that we missed. But definitely, I mean, shoot us a, shoot us a tweet, shoot us a comment with your favorite comic that was turned into a TV show. We, we, we'd love... Sorry, comic that was turned into an animated TV show. Right. We'd love to hear back from you guys on that. So oh, that's yes. definitely something that we we'd love to hear what your favorite one was. If we miss one, you know, we're it's nothing against it. It's just we'd love to hear back from you guys on what you'd like as well. Moving on now, I'm going to discuss Doctor Strange. Okay. Don't worry, there's no spoilers. No. no I'm, spoilers. I'm I'm not gonna spoil any part of the movie. I don't believe in spoilers. I, I'm, I'm only going to mention <laughs> stuff that has been mentioned in the trailers. So you, if, if you haven't seen it yet, don't worry. This is not a, I'm going to ruin it for you. If you've seen Marvel's movies, this is definitely right up that alley. They do a great job. Benedict Cumberbatch, I believe, does a phenomenal job in the movie. A uh, few people have commented on his accent. In all honesty, I didn't notice it because I was kind of too enthralled by the movie. This is definitely a very visual movie, so seen in theaters. Yes. I should have saw it in 3D, and I know it's not you something... You know, I've, I, I've heard from a, a, a few of my <laughs> friends on Facebook have mentioned that if you're going to see a movie in 3D, that this is a good one to see it in. I've been burned too many times on the 3D <laughs> gimmick, so I'm, I'm sorry. I, I should have done it, but I, I'm going with... I went yeah. with my heart and didn't see it in 3D. A little bit of regret on that part, but... It is what it is. It, it adds to the mythos. It introduces magic into the Marvel universe and definitely kind of explains why you haven't... Which I am so excited about. I it, love magic characters. It does a good job of explaining why you haven't really seen magic in the yeah. Marvel universe up until this point, right. too. So that's interesting. And they they do a phenomenal job with, his, with him astral projecting. They... Strange isn't the character I'm super familiar with. I want to get more. After seeing this, I immediately was like, I, I need to pick up some more Strange comics. Well, they, I can't remember. Or, sorry, graphic novels. I can't remember what it's called, but there's the one volume. It was originally like, I think, six, six issues. I believe you're thinking of The Oath. And this does borrow some stuff from The Oath. Yeah. I'm not going to say what, Yeah, but, but there's a very interesting it's scene. It's a good read. That's a really um, good read. So I'm definitely looking to check that out. Way of the yep. Weird is another one that I'm going to take a look at. I know those are really good ones within his um, repertoire of graphic novels. So I'm sure that there's others that people are going to point out. But overall, this was a great movie. I, I definitely, if, if you're a Marvel fan, you're not going to go to this disappointed. It does do some setup for other stuff. I'm not going <laughs> to... All, Remember, all the, no spoilers. <laughs> all the Marvel movies at this point are just setting up for other things. So just yeah. keep that in mind when you see any Marvel movie, because I guarantee you all of them are just setting up stuff. I, I will give one tiny bit of a spoiler, though. One of my favorite characters was the Cloak of Levitation. Oh. Yes. If you don't know what I mean by that, watch the movie. You'll be very impressed with, with it. So... <laughs> So that's my quick, very simplified review of Doctor Strange. Go see it. If you're a big fan of the Marvel movies, you're not going to be disappointed. If you're not a fan of the Marvel movies at this point, then I kind of wonder why you're listening to a podcast that's entirely based on video games, comics, and movies. Well, they could be DC people. That too. <laughs> but I'd highly doubt that even someone I who like loves both, so. I, we, we, we both do, so I highly doubt that someone would have not seen that. If you guys have been tuning in to us for a while now, you'll know that in our first episode, we kind of explained different segments that we were going to have or that different topics, you know, we were going to cover. And we are proud to introduce our, as we originally put it, our Comic Readers Club thing. But we've gotten a better name for it. And Ellie will take over now to explain what our <laughs> first introduction to this will be. Ooh, me, me. Yes. Okay. So we are going to do what's called read this haha -ha, get it i know it's cute <laughs> and basically we will pick a graphic novel um and we'll give like a we're gonna do like a short i guess synopsis of the, it or the plan is this is we're going to pick a graphic novel we're yes. telling you what it is 
this time two weeks in advance. So next week's episode will not be covering it, but the weeks after episode will be covering it. Give you it. a chance to read it. Give you a chance to pick it up, read it yourself, so that you can, you know, give some input or, you know, give us feedback on what you think so we can actually use it in the episode if yes. you get it to us before we record. That would be fun. It would be. Um, we will also be doing, so you know that it's coming up, the week prior, after the podcast, after the podcast, cast that week is done on monday later on in the week there will be a quick like four to five minute review that we will put up on youtube so you will have to subscribe to our youtube channel see the quick review on the graphic novel we'll be covering that week then on the podcast we'll be going into a much more in-depth discussion of our reading of the material so that's going to be our read this segment yes. and ellie would you like to introduce them to what our first read this graphic novel will be. I would love to. I actually introduced this series to Mr. Zinger. Fables, mm -hmm. the very first volume, Yes, is what we're going to be talking about. Um, it's the, it kind of leads off to a crazy story with uh, dealing with Rose Red. Mm -hmm. um, and something happens I don't know how, are we going to go very detailed with no, this? No, we're just kind of going to, I, we're just going to, it's the first. First volume of Fables. The, the first, read this, is going to be Fables, Volume, volume one. 1. Yes. Legends in Exile. Yes. And, yeah, so it's, um, if you're want, wanting to know whether you want to read it or not, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, like I said, there's this um, mur it, murder. I guess the easier way to put it, there is a murder, yes. but you know the fairy tales you were read to as a kid? Imagine if those fairy tales were existing in the real world. Yes. I know you're probably thinking, oh, it's like Once Upon a Time. Which, it, I mean, it is. It's kind of like it. It is. It is and it isn't. Yeah. You'll have to check out our review and then, of course, the podcast in two weeks to get our full review of it. But it is interesting. The other thing that we're going to have with this, since this one does go in tandem, we're going to have our first video game review as well. Because Telltale did The Wolf Among Us, which is how Ellie introduced me to this. <laughs> I, no joke, played the game, beat the game, immediately walked over to our graphic novel And saw that bookshelf, I owned it. Saw that she owned the first graphic novel, yes. pulled it off the shelf, and started reading it while the credits were still rolling. Oh, it's fantastic. So, yeah. We'll have a review of the game probably out later this week. Okay, yeah. Next week, we'll have the review, our quick five-minute review of the graphic novel. And then the week after that on the podcast will be an in-depth discussion. I'm so excited. <laughs> on the graphic novel. Yeah. So this is our, our segment that we're going to be doing every now and then called Read This. We also will take recommendations from you guys oh, if yeah, it's possible. Oh, yeah, definitely. But if you want to read it yourself, it is once again called... Fables, Volume 1, Legends in Exile. And and I kind of wanted to just say, too, for the read this, um, we're open to any kind of graphic novel. So it it can be, you know, a popular DC one, a Marvel one, an indie one. Mm -hmm. um, Xenoscope is one of my favorites. Um, I, so it's there's the possibilities that we're not against any type of graphic novel. So. Yes. And speaking of Telltale. Yes. Little rumor fairies on the internet. Ooh. Yes. They may be doing a Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy. Really? Yes. <laughs> Fascinating. I know. So I hope that definitely comes true. But yes, those are the little... Well, I'm still in the middle of midst of playing the Telltale Batman, which has not disappointed because I don't I think there is that. a possibility for Telltale to disappoint me in anything. Yes. So Very we'll happy. have more on that, of course, as stuff develops. Yeah. Um, well, we have some comments that we need to touch on really quick. The first one is from a Tim Tate, and he asks, Why is Marvel backing off of X-Men simply because they don't have rights to the movies? This is an interesting thing that I that's kind of been pointed out by other people that are way more knowledgeable than us on some of this stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I I can see where this is possibly coming from. They backed off of the X Men comics. I know pretty substantially. Wolverine, one of the most popular characters, is currently dead. 
there is the old man Logan version of him currently in the Marvel, the main Marvel universe. And there is X-23 who's taken up the mantle of Wolverine running around right now. But they've also backed off of the Fantastic Four. The first family of Marvel kind of isn't really, I mean, they're there. They're just not that involved. Right. Is it ironic that they don't own the film rights to those? It's possible. Yeah. Um, so that being said, I mean, it could be, I, I think it's possible. It's definitely something we need to do a little bit more research on. I know that they're doing this whole Marvel Now 2.0, so we can see what that has to give us. Because that might have some more answers in there on whether they're truly backing off from the X-Men and Fantastic Four and other franchises they don't have the rights to. Or whether they're going to kind of have a relaunch of sorts. With that, with the relaunch, we go to our next comment. Carl, he put, they're actually not. They faked us out and are doing what looks like an amazing relaunch. And um, he also put, talk about how Marvel is letting the ending to Civil War II be spoiled by releasing the new Marvel Now lineup before it ends. Now, I do know that the new Marvel Now 2.0 has had some issues come out with it already. Civil War, at the current recording of this, hasn't completely ended to the best of my knowledge. I'll admit this right now. We're not the best at keeping up to date on currently running comics. We prefer graphic novels mm -hmm. because I, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a few issues here and there. But to be honest, there's been too many times where I bought the first half of a series and it's phenomenal. And then the second half is complete garbage. So that does happen. And I well, just don't like having to wait until the next issue comes that's, out. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing, too. I, I've, I've read some graphic novels fast enough that I've been like, oh, man, I, yeah. I need the next one. So we'll definitely look into this and we'll see what comes of it. I, I It wouldn't surprise me if Marvel's kind of leaked some stuff beforehand. And, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this. But thanks for the comments. We definitely oh, appreciate yeah. it, you guys. It's really awesome. Um, we, we do the best we can to look into stuff that, you know, you ask us to... To talk about everything it's just on this particular one we're gonna have to do some more research and maybe in a week or two we'll have some more information for you guys on this so with that what is the best ways to get in touch with us to leave comments or to follow us and keep up to date on what we're what's going on with us well zinger i have that for you don't forget to check us out on facebook zing this give us a like twitter at zing this give us a tweet iTunes, zing this. Give us a review. Hopefully five stars. Yeah. Woo. Instagram, at zing this podcast. You can definitely give us, you know, some hearts. Follow us on there because we actually drop a little photo collage of yes. what we're going to be talking about. So on Sundays, I'll drop a photo collage so you'll kind of get a hint at what Monday's podcast will be covering. Yay. Um, SoundCloud, zing this. We are also on Stitcher now as well, Ooh. and we're, I believe, on Google Play too. I'm working on getting us on as many different platforms as possible. And and if you want to email us, there is. You can email us at zingthis at gmail.com. The final one is you can, of course, find us on patreon.com slash zingthis. There we have different tiers. Of course, we have, you know, the Patreon donation of $1, which we are grateful for anything yeah. that you give us with that. We have a donation of $5 a month, which would allow you to get an exclusive Patreon-only podcast. And we're working on that first one. It will be Zing This Secret Origins. <laughs> and that will hopefully be out in the next week. Yes. So if you are donating $5, then we will definitely, you'll definitely be able to hear some, not only that, the origins, but we're going to have some, some content and stuff that didn't make it to the final podcast, too. So there's... So there's that. There's going to be some interesting stuff there with, with that. Finally, if you do a donation of $10 a month, that will enable you to get behind-the-scenes video. We're going to be doing some behind-the-scenes video of, you know, what we do. You know, you can actually see our lovely faces while, we're do, while we do this and get some more <laughs> exclusive behind-the-scenes content. Another thing we're going to be doing is... Possibly playing, you know, Game of Munchkins on camera. We'll, we'll set up a Game of Munchkins and play that on camera Would so you, that you can so see be us. down with that. You can see us playing that uh, Game of Magic the Gathering. So we're, we're working on some cool behind the scenes and just some cool exclusive content that will go on our Patreon site. We're, of course, still going to do stuff for free, you know, on iTunes and on SoundCloud and all that stuff. But we want to expand it. And, of course, finally, 
check us out on YouTube because we're going to start to do some little like five minute or so reviews of games, graphic novels, stuff like that. So it's definitely something we're trying to expand our scope of what we do for you guys. Yeah. So I guess that wraps everything up today. I mean, definitely was a lot of stuff in this podcast. A lot of, a lot of remembering, a lot of member berries. Thank you, South Park, for that. <laughs> yes, member berries. All right, we will see you guys next week. This has been Zing This. Dang.